Welcome to today's short story focus on Korea. Um, We're aiming to explore the language and structure used in this short story to develop your skills for English Literature Paper 2, uh, Section A, for those of you who are completing the Telling Tales question. First of all, I'd like you to think about the stereotypes that we normally have for a healthy father and son relationship. What do we expect a healthy father and son relationship to be like? This question is clearly linked to the short story Korea. Uh, for those of you who've already read it, and for those of you who haven't, it's really important for us to think about the stereotypes between a healthy father and son relationship. Okay, next we're going to look at some paintings. Um, the reason we're looking at some paintings is because scientifically it's been proven that your memory is far stronger when you look at an image and with words beside it. This way we're going to look at some skill questions for the English language papers as well as the English literature paper to develop your analysis skills. So here, what does the body language suggest about the father and son relationship? Well I'd say it's quite formal. You see here that the father's direction of attention is clearly on some sort of newspaper and the son is aiming to get his father's attention as he has his arm around his father's shoulder. Clear sign of respect and union. They're sitting side by side. They are at one. Uh, who seems to value the relationship the most? I'll let you think about that now and then I'll move on to my answer. So here's 10 seconds. I think the son values the relationship far more than the father here because the father seems to be quite masculine in his lack of emotion uh, towards his son. What does the setting suggest about their father and son relationship? Well, you can see that they're clearly from an upper class or middle class family. Nice living room, they've got a sofa, the son is dressed very nicely. Um, it's a very formal situation. And what does the father's facial expression or body language suggest to the viewer about their relationship? Well, I think his uh, eyes are quite focused on the newspaper rather than the fact that his son is with him. But perhaps we could also argue that the father wishes to share the news on the newspaper with his son. So this is a quite a stereotypical picture of a healthy father and son relationship, I hope. Um, you can see here that the father and son are at one. Now, let's turn our attention to this little painting over here. Saturn devouring his son by Francisco Goya. You can clearly see that this is not a healthy father and son relationship. Um, we've got a bit of uh, historical information over here. It's based on a Greek myth of the Titan Cronus in the title Romanized to Saturn, who, fearing that he would be overthrown by one of his children, decided to eat, to eat each one up upon their birth. The work is one of the 14 black paintings that Goya painted directly onto the walls of his house sometime between 1819 and 1823. Now, obviously, if we were to apply the same questions here, we can clearly see that the father and son relationship does not exist because a father is not expected to cause his son any harm whatsoever. He's supposed to be the protector, the provider, the supporter. And here we've got a violent individual, a monstrous creature devouring his son for his own power, for his own greed. Okay. Now, I think this is quite fitting for our reading of Korea. Yes, I may be exaggerating how bad the father and son relationship is in Korea, but I just want to set the tone that this story is indeed quite shocking. Um, we have a particular twist, and the main climax of the story is when the son finds out about his father's intentions and how deadly they are. So, I obviously want to develop your skills for AQA English exams, both for language and literature. Here's a quick English language paper two question four skill. Instead of writing paragraphs, just like you to think 
in your mind the answers to these questions. Compare how the two painters convey their different attitudes to parenting in respect of their father and son relationships. In your answer, you could compare their different attitudes, compare the methods they use to convey those attitudes, and support your ideas with references to both texts. So, if you wish to develop your English language skills as well as your English literature paper skills, this is a good question to do. Obviously, verbally, with a friend, or with a parent. Now, you get marks for AO3. Those of you who don't know what AO3 is in general for the whole paper, it's historical context. Um, not just historical, but the context of the story, the author's background, all of these things are quite fitting in our ability to understand why the writer chose to structure his story in a certain way and why he chose to use certain language techniques, well, literary terms. Here is some um, historical information. I'd like you to read through it and obviously write down into your own notes anything that you think is quite fitting to note down. The fact that he himself was uh, a teacher, a police officer, suggests that he does know um, all about parenting and how, you know, it's quite a difficult task and the balance of being an author authority figure and yet being a caring emotional supporter is something that the story reflects as being quite difficult. Thanks to The Guardian, obviously I collected this information from The Guardian newspaper for you. Here's a few more inf uh, bits of information uh, for his writing style. His short stories, collected in one volume in 1992, are sparse, incisive portraits of pastoral psychology. One, Korea, the one that we're looking at, became a feature film directed by Cathal Black in 1995. McGurhan has frequently been described as an existentialist writer, in the sense that he permits his characters to transcend the religious, social and sexual inhibitions of post-independence Ireland, and the same could be said of his career. Now, out of all of the historical information, I find this to be specifically relevant. His intense attachment to his mother, his incomprehension at her early death from cancer, and the fact that his authoritarian father provided no occasion for grieving, are unnerving signposts to the mindset that permeates his short stories. Now, apparently he had an authoritarian father who provided no time for grieving. So quite masculine, quite defiant father who decides that men are not supposed to cry and men are not supposed to show any particular attachment or emotion. I think that's quite important to keep in mind when we read about the father figure presented in the short story Korea. So here's a quick overview of the story as a whole. Korea is a kind of rural elegy or a softly chanted lament to the subtle but significant changes in relations between father and son on one level and between rural Ireland and the world outside its borders on another. So overall, it is the story of a fisherman and a potato farmer father and his teenage son performing the routines of their common working life for the final time, fishing. The story is set on a single day, sometime during the years of the war, from which it takes its name, Korea, that is to say sometime after 1950 and before 1953, and is narrated by the son from the vantage point of several years later. This point of view is crucial to the drama of the story, which hinges both on the position of the son relative to his father and the son's emotional insight as an older man. So the story is told by an older man, the son as an older man looking back apparently okay so what we'll do now is we'll look at some important words that you need to know before we start reading so reprisals ambush high fullerton calculating irony propaganda post-traumatic stress disorder all these words are quite important for you to know so i'd like you to make sure that you learn their meanings before we start reading otherwise you'll find it quite difficult what we will be doing next is i'll be reading the story with you line by line and aiming to drop in some analysis of language and structure along the way so images to look out for in the story of korea fishing 
and the fishing hooks and the bait and the worms the metaphors for the way in which the father aims to hook his son for a particular meme that we will learn about later for those of you who haven't read it buttons are quite important it's a repetitive motif in the story it has a gory uh, meaning to it because it's associated with the death the violent death of an innocent young boy of a soldier spider webs um, a lavatory and a riverside these are all important setting descriptions for us to analyze later and obviously post-traumatic stress disorder is when a soldier relives and is haunted by the horrific images they've experienced at war even though they've left the war place they keep thinking about it again and again and again so narrative perspective although the story's opening sentence says that the father told the story it is related second-hand by the narrator this choice is not mere convenience but a nuance of narrative technique the story of the execution could easily have been written in the father's direct words, but it isn't. The son relates the story, and this suggests that it is a story, an anecdote that he has heard before, perhaps more than once. It is a story that he has observed, absorbed. Okay, so this is a quick reference to narrative, but I think it's quite fitting for us to actually start reading the story together. Korea. You saw an execution then too, didn't you? I asked my father, and he started to tell as he rode. So, what we can see here is there is a violent tone at the very beginning of the story, this war terminology, execution, and so on. The semantic field of war is heavily used throughout the story. Continues to say, He'd been captured in an ambush in late 1919, and they were shooting prisoners in Mountjoy as reprisals at the time. He thought it was he who'd be next, for after a few days they moved him to the cell next to the prison yard. He could see out through the bars. No rap to prepare himself came to the door that night, and at daybreak he saw the two prisoners they'd decided to shoot being marched out. A man in his early thirties, and what was little more than a boy, sixteen or seventeen, and he was weeping. They blindfolded the boy, but the man refused the blindfold. When the officer shouted, the boy clicked to attention, but the man stayed as he was, chewing very slowly. He had his hands in his pockets. So we have a clear contrast between the young boy soldier and the older man, who was chewing very slowly. The adverb slowly suggests a lack of care, suggests an arrogant sense of grandeur, suggests this sense of um, superiority and nonchalance towards the whole act of being executed whereas the dear old little boy sorry the dear little boy is absolutely terrified for his dear life um, I would say that the older soldier is disillusioned by the whole concept of war and doesn't care he's slightly seeming to be suicidal take your hands out of your pockets the officer shouted again the man slowly shook his head. It's a bit too late now in the day for that, he said. The officer then ordered them to fire, and as the volley rang, the boy tore at his tunic over the heart as if to pluck out the bullets, and the buttons of the tunic began to fly into the air before he pitched forward on his face. So, there's a clear difference in the description between the young soldier's death and the older soldier's death. Here we have a sense of emotive sympathy as the boy tore at his tunic in desperation and there's the simile as if to pluck out the bullets and the buttons of the tunic began to fly whereas you have the other the other healed quietly over on his back it must have been because of the hands in his pocket so this understated death of the old elderly man suggests a lack of sympathy so clearly we have an age divide here just very much along the lines of the age divide that we will be introduced between the father and the son. Now, I will be adding part two of Korea's story as I will continue to read it and annotate it alongside with you. Thank you very much.